Welcome back and happy new year everyone! What can you do after you beat everything in the game after you played it for 1000 hours? Of course you can still improve your build, make another build, start a new game plus or you beat the shit out of Polemarks all day long to get the new damage record. And I just got the new damage world record with 1.8 billion damage. That is 1800 million. Check the numbers guys. This is real and I will show you how to do it. I will first explain you what's actually happening here, because this build is not usable for daily play, it uses some specific mechanics. One of it is the chance to deal assassin damage on a melee hit and you can invest 20 points in your masteries to get a 5% chance to use your assassin damage for melee hits. When you then use a really strong attack like an overpower attack, that will also snowball in dealing a lot of assassin damage in your melee hits. And you can use the engraving plus 500% damage when covered in black oil. Of course that usually never happens and it only lasts for 3 seconds. And then there is the polomark glitch. When you hit polomarks from behind you actually deal 4 times the usual damage. So when I hit that polomark in my last video it actually dealt 4 times the 40 million overpower damage. And when you combine that now with the oil pot and with the chance to deal assassin damage in an overpower animation cancel, you will get over 1 billion damage. That was the former world record from 2020. But now the game gave us some really crazy new tools. First of all the plus 100% damage but minus resistances and the plus 200% critical damage with fire attacks. But especially the new fire damage engraving has some fiddly things that can go wrong and I will show you exactly how I did it. First of all you should pick an island like Naxos island and ideally make it Athenian. Having this island under Athenian control can actually help you increase your damage to have damage with Athenians in your build. But we will come to that later when I show you the build. There is a polo mark next to a couple of oil pots and in that fort there is also a shallow water pond which we can use to increase our damage when we have contact with water. You should first of course clean up the fort, kill everyone there and then paralyze the polo mark with your paralyzing arrows. Then bring him to the shallow pond and place his head exactly in that direction so that you have enough room to actually stand in the water and still execute the overpower attack on the polo mark's head. After all this preparation you can now head back to the mountain to make a manual save and save this state of the fort with the polo mark lying in the pond. Because in case you didn't get the assassin damage on a melee hit you can simply reload that save. Also don't forget to switch to nighttime because that way you will get the additional 10% damage multiplier from stealth master. Make sure to select the correct loadout, I cleaned the fort with a different one because this one will only have 40% crit chance so that is really not for daily play. So in case you don't get the high damage from the polo mark you can always come back and reload that manual save you created here. The first thing you do now when you try this jump down the cliff and activate your fire damage. Because you have to activate your fire damage to trigger the new 200% crit damage from the typhon's maze engraving. You can now kill the enemy which is always respawning, pick up the oil pot while the fire damage is running the whole time. You have to keep the fire damage running because it has to run for at least 20 seconds. The Typhoon's Maze engraving only triggers after 20 seconds. That is literally when the fire damage is almost over or is actually over. If you check your inventory after a full fire cycle you will have the 200% crit damage added. But that only works if you activate fire manually. Now you can activate your battle cry ability, activate fire damage again, slow down time and hit the polo mark right on his head. The overpower attack will always cancel because the enemy is lying on the ground, dealing all the damage in a single attack. And if you are lucky you will get a proc between 1.6 and 1.8 billion damage. The only problem is that you have to try that a lot of times because you only have a 5% chance to deal assassin damage on a melee hit. And if your crit chance is not 100% you are not even guaranteed to get a critical hit. But now let's finally check out the build and I think this is actually the best build with the best chances for the highest damage. This is of course only geared towards assassin damage and it uses some very situational perks that are normally not useful at all. 
We'll start here with the first weapon, which is an assassin dagger with assassin damage, critical damage and fire damage. And here we engrave the convert 50% damage to all damage. You could of course also use a sword here. There's actually no difference in using a sword or a dagger. I just found a dagger first, so I used the dagger. But if you get a sword with the same engravings with assassin damage, critical damage and fire damage, you can also use a sword for that. You have to either use a sword or a dagger to perform the overpower attack on the polymer. The second melee weapon will be an axe, because only on axes we can engrave the new engraving from the Typhoon's axe. The axe has the same engravings as the dagger, assassin damage, fire damage, critical damage and the Typhoon's axe engraving with the 200% critical damage with fire attacks. On the bandit bow we have assassin damage, crit shards and critical damage and here we engrave the 100% damage but health cap to 25%. In any other build except in this one, the big horn bow would of course be the better option. But here we want the maximum crit damage, we only need assassin damage. So here we use the bandit bow in any other build, in any normal build, always use the big horn bow, definitely. This is just an exception, this is not a normal build. For the helmet of course we use the dark steel mask with hunter damage, 100% crit damage while full health. That is a unique engraving that can only occur on this specific helmet. Normally you cannot get 100% crit damage on helmets. And when we engrave another 50% crit damage here we get a helmet with 150% crit damage. Which is really awesome. On the bracers we have assassin damage, 100% crit damage while full health, another 50% crit damage. And here we even use the 50% crit damage with warrior abilities. Since the overpower attack is a warrior ability, we have to use a 50% crit damage with warrior abilities. So we get 200% crit damage on the bracers. Then on the belt we have assassin damage, damage with overpower abilities, which is our overpower attack and 100% crit damage while full health. And here we engrave the 100% damage to all damage types. It is actually debatable if we use the overpower damage here or rather going for Athenian damage. Athenian damage will have 40% damage, damage with overpowers will have 20% damage, so Athenian damage should be better. But we don't really know if Athenian damage or damage to enemy groups actually apply on a polymark. The polymark is most likely classified as an elite soldier and classified as elite damage and not as an Athenian soldier. So I rather settled here with the damage for overpower abilities because that was the safe bet to get the damage dealt. Of course you can try this yourself and use the damage to Athenians instead. Maybe you even get more damage and actually beat it. On the torso we have assassin damage, 10% all damage and 50% critical damage. There is actually no engraving other than all damage. There is no 20% damage with overpower attacks. There is no damage to Athenians, no damage to Spartans. So having all damage here was the only option. And here we engrave the 500% damage while covered in black oil. And as explained before, that only lasts for around 3 seconds. So that is an incredible situational engraving. Only really useful to use in this build for this damage record. Then on the boots we have assassin damage, 40% fire damage, 100% crit damage and here we have the 50% damage while in contact with water. So we use a lot of special engravings, a lot of very situational engravings that you would normally never use in a build but they actually make sense when you go for the absolute highest damage possible. The stats for this build are 690% assassin damage, that's all that matters, 30% damage with overpower abilities, 1075% critical damage and only 40% chance. So you have to do that a lot of times actually to get a critical hit on the polar mark. That is actually the annoying thing, when you even manage to get the 5% chance to deal assassin damage on a melee hit and you don't get a critical hit, you just have to do it again. The 1075% is of course the value when the 200% from the Typhoon's Maze engraving are triggered. Without that you would only have 875% but don't forget that you also get 50% for the warrior ability. So in fact you will have a total of 1125 when you execute your attack. I'll just mention the most important abilities here. Archery Master gives us 40% additional hunter damage, which we convert. Weapons Master, Gear Master give us warrior stuff. We use the overpower attacks. We get 40% fire from fire mastery. We use Shadow Assassin for additional crit damage and assassin damage. And of course, Stealth Master and Slow Time. 
Then here in the masteries I will only mention the ones which are needed. Hunter damage for the conversion, crit chance, crit damage. In the warrior tree we have the damage with overpower abilities and then either Athenian or Spartan damage. So no matter if you use it in the build you should max them out here. And then of course max out fire damage. Armor penetration should have no effect but I use it anyway. We have damage with warrior abilities of course for the overpower attack. Then assassin damage and here the 10% damage when time slowed down for the slow time bonus. Crit chance, crit damage, damage while full health. Then here further down damage to elites. Our polo mark is of course an elite enemy. And then we have the 5% chance to deal assassin damage on a melee hit. That is actually the most important mastery. Without that it doesn't even work. I also buffed the damage when attacking from behind a bit. I normally never use it but here we will grab every single thing we can. I just have to remind you again, this is definitely not a good build for daily play. It has only 40% crit chance, it is really annoying to use, it doesn't deal a lot of damage, it only deals a ton of damage in one very specific situation. Use it if you want to try the record, but in any other situation just don't use this build. But I hope you liked this video, please let me know if you beat the record and don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.